The actual and the desired verbal and non-verbal sexually assertive communication between married couples from a collectivistic Muslim culture. Sexuality is a particularly important aspect of human life. Unlike other animals, humans have the edge to enjoy their sexual encounters more than animals by expressing their feelings through communication and focusing on the social bonding of a relationship. Sexual assertiveness is communicating one's sexual needs to the partner to disclose sexual preferences, make direct requests to initiate sexual behavior, and refuse sexual behavior. Sexual assertiveness could be defined comprehensively as being able to recognize, prioritize, and express one's own limits, needs, and desires in a sexual situation. It is a social skill, a tendency to be confident about one's sexuality, and an ability to fulfill one's sexual needs. Sexual assertiveness involves sexual communication which is a form of education between partners about their sexual needs, desires, and preferences as these preferences may be naturally different from one partner to another. Sexual communication may involve causal discussion between the partners on a variety of sexual topics. It helps in achieving sexual goals such as sexual autonomy and sexual satisfaction, higher sexual desire, sexual satisfaction, more positive feelings about sexual fantasies, and having lesser chances for sexual victimization. Sexual assertiveness is an extremely important factor in a healthy sexual and marital life. It helps in achieving sexual goals such as sexual autonomy and sexual satisfaction, higher sexual desire, more positive feelings about sexual fantasies, and having lesser chances for sexual victimization. Sexual assertiveness has been positively associated with overall mental health, self-assertion, self-esteem, self-expression, and satisfaction with interpersonal relationship. Women with lesser sexual assertiveness have greater chances to develop sexual dysfunctions such as hypoactive sexual desire disorder. Sexual assertiveness has been considered important in marital relationships too. It helps in sustaining the relationship and avoiding infidelity and divorce. The effects of culture on one's beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors are well recorded. The cultural factors and the cognitive processes of humans, such as reasoning and differentiating between good and bad, influence their sexualities remarkably. Culture determines the normal and abnormal ways for sexual expressions and sexual behavior. Studies have demonstrated that people from different cultural backgrounds perceive sexual assertiveness differently and people belonging to Western or individualistic cultures are more sexually assertive than people from Eastern or collectivistic cultures. Studying sexuality is still considered a taboo in many parts of the world and most of the studies on sexual assertiveness belong to Western cultures. Dr. Sukun conducted a study to explore the actual and desired levels of sexual assertiveness, for the first time, among Pakistani married couples. Pakistan is a developing country. Majority of its population is Muslim. People commonly follow a traditional collectivistic culture. The state of mental health literacy in the country is poor and people are still reluctant to focus on their psychosocial issues adequately. Women have higher tendencies towards mental disorders as compared to men. Marriage is regarded as the only source to gratify sexual needs. Most of the marriages are arranged by the family and women must comply to social norms in this regard. Sexuality is considered an extremely private issue and men and women both adhere to conventional trends in performing sexual behavior. The aforesaid study by Dr. Sukun was initiated with an intent to be the first in the country to analyze the variations in the actual and desired levels of verbal and non-verbal sexual communication among Pakistani married couples. The study involved 207 married couples. The participants were selected through snowball sampling technique. All the participants were adults, aging between 21 to 59 years with a mean of 35 years. Their married lifespan ranged between 1 to 35 years with a mean of 7 years. All the respondents were educated enough to respond to the instruments. The current study intended to measure sexually assertive communication from two dimensions which were the actual levels of sexual assertiveness and the desired levels of sexual assertiveness. A spouse may desire to be sexually assertive but may remain unable to express the desires through actual behavior due to several factors such as cultural norms, communicational gaps, joint family system, etc. The existing literature reflected only two scales which intended to measure sexual assertiveness. Sexual assertiveness scale for women was developed for women only. 
Herbert Index of Sexual Assertiveness explored the initiating and refusal-related sexual behaviors. Both scales, however, did not incorporate the two required dimensions which were the desired level of sexual assertiveness and the actual level of sexual assertiveness. Dr. Sukun, therefore, developed a new questionnaire in Urdu to measure the desired and actual levels of sexually assertive communication among men and women both. The questionnaire comprised of ten items and two parts. The first part comprised of five items to measure the actual levels of sexual assertiveness. The second part also comprised of five items and intended to measure the desired levels of sexual assertiveness. The response sheet was based on a five-point Likert scale ranging from extremely incorrect to extremely correct. The questionnaire also included demographic questions about gender, age, and marital lifespan. The questionnaire was tested for its reliability during the study and was found satisfactorily appropriate. The Cronbach's alpha reliability of the scale was good and the alpha for its sub-scales were 0.73 and 0.84 for the actual and desired states, respectively. The item total and item scale correlations were also highly significant for all the items. The study also used the Longing for Interpersonal Touch Picture Questionnaire, which measures six different types of touch namely random touch, holding, shaking hands, stroking, hugging, and kissing. The respondents answered the actual and desired frequencies of six different types of touch they received or wished to receive from their spouses. The study revealed highly significant differences between the actual and the desired levels of sexually assertive communication among couples. The couples, including husbands and wives both, did not actually express their sexuality to one another up to the levels they desire themselves. The same findings were further proved similar by analyzing the differences between the actual and desired levels of sexually assertive communication among husbands and wives separately. Husbands and wives both, when analyzed individually and not as a couple, did not actually express their sexuality to the spouses as they desired. The results for the non-verbal communication revealed that husbands had statistically significant differences between the actual and the desired hugging and stroking from their wives. A significantly positive correlation was also found between husbands' touch-related desires from wives with husbands' age. Wives, on the other hand, did not reflect any significant differences between the actual and the desired touch from their husbands. Sexual satisfaction has been regarded as the most important aspect of marital life. Sexual satisfaction is not merely the absence of sexual dissatisfaction. It involves satisfying a partner's entire expectations from sexual activity. Sexual assertiveness plays a vital role in understanding and entertaining the expectations from the partner. It serves as a form of education between partners to learn each other's sexual expectations. It is communicating on a variety of sexual topics which help the partners to negotiate for more common sexual grounds among them. The desire to be touched, on the other hand, is highly gratified in romantic relationships. Expression of affectionate feelings among spouses is critical to relational satisfaction. Affectionate touch among spouses leads to sexual behavior. The proximity of affectionate touch has also been found higher in married individuals as compared to singles. The aforesaid study by Dr. Sukun intended to measure the levels of desired and actual sexually assertive communication between husbands and wives. As expected, husbands and wives desired to be more sexually assertive but could not achieve the desired levels in their actual behaviors. It is not surprising that the spouses cannot achieve the targets for sexual assertiveness which are set by themselves. There are several socio-cultural factors involved which stop their sexual selves to be fully assertive. Shame is the most important hurdle in this regard. Shame is a culturally constructed phenomenon which is a reaction formation in Freudian terms and is practiced for social compliance. Shame is closely linked with one's morality and modesty. Expression of sexual desires is considered morally abnormal, shameful, culturally sensitive, and disrespectful. Several studies have indicated that shame among spouses reduce sexual satisfaction, especially in women. It is based on cultural norms that stop a person from being erotophiliac or sexually expressive. It affects women more adversely than men as, due to their sexual assertiveness, they are more prone to be labeled as shameless, slag, slut, whore, or vulgar. 
Shame also stops people to discuss genitals, sexual desires, premarital sex, menstrual issues, and other topics related to sexuality. Sexual attitudes developed by shame and other cultural influences stop people in being sexually assertive. Shyness has also been inversely correlated with relational satisfaction, relational quality, marital adjustment, and marital sustainability. Being open on the issues and concerns of sexuality among married couples is extremely important for marital satisfaction, marital adjustment, and marital sustainability. Partners are advised to overcome the socio-cultural barriers in this regard. It must be understood that shame, shyness, lack of communication, female objectification, and all other socio-cultural hurdles in sexual communication are not initiated by religions. Being sexually assertive is not at all sinful. Religions play an important role in managing one's sexual behaviors and forbid one to have illegal or unethical sexual encounters. Religions, however, do not consider sexual communication among the married couples a sin. Sexual communication among legally married couples is rather appreciable, both religiously and psychologically. Thanks for listening. To read the entire paper, kindly visit www.dersakoon.info.